I've got three electro harmonic small stone pedals, which all look very, very different. And I've got a burning desire to know if there's actually any meaningful difference between them. Let's start with the jam. <laughs> There's so many ways to use a phaser, and that was my attempt to fit as many combinations as possible into a minute 20 seconds. Let's start with the first guitar you heard, GNL Legacy Special, Electro Harmonics Hot Wax, current generation small stone, Caroline Meteor Reverb. <laughs> Then we're on to the Reverend East Sider, where we're going to use two big box electro harmonics pedals the Lizard Queen and the Russian Small Stone. <laughs> And then at the end, we're back on the Legacy Special, going into the US reissue, into the crayon side of the hot wax. <laughs> For the unfamiliar, the electroharmonic small stone is a phaser, which means that it inverts the phase of the signal in such a way that we get these little notches in the overall frequency response. Those notches get swept back and forth, which gives us that sound. Like almost every other phaser on the planet, it's got a control for the rate, but it's also got a color switch, which kind of supercharges the overall intensity of the effect. These all look very different, but do they sound any different? I looped them all into an Electro Harmonics tri-parallel mixer, and then I threw a DoD looking glass up front for a little bit of overdrive, and now the experiment can begin. <laughs> Thank you. 
So right away, the big difference I hear is between the modern pedal and everything else. It just sounds more clear and defined across the full sweep. Of course, that clarity and definition could wind up in either the pros or the cons column, depending on what kind of sound you're after. Kind of like a vintage versus modern thing. There's a more subtle kind of difference going on between the version 4 reissue and the black Russian small stone. Give it a listen, see what you think. <laughs> It's there, it's definitely in there, and I think I might describe the difference as a looseness in the lower frequencies on the Russian pedal. It gets a little cloudy in there, but keep in mind this is a fairly limited experiment, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this is limited later on. But without a doubt, the biggest difference we're gonna hear between these pedals shows up when we engage the color switch. <laughs> That color switch takes the phasing effect and just kind of shoves it right in your face for better or for worse. And surprisingly, the older Russian model had what I would consider to be the most subtle color effect of the three. The modern nano small stone brings it a little more to the forefront, but this version four US reissue, this just goes full tilt in all directions. You heard it. And I've heard people say that they love the small stone, but they just, never get around to using the color mode that is just like a little bit too much. I think going over the edge is kind of what electroharmonics is all about. And having that effect way out front, well, it can be a powerful and creative tool sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes we seem to adopt this tunnel vision belief of, well, the pedal sounds like this because that's what it sounded like when I listened to it. And with so many pedals, especially these, and especially this one, 
and especially this one, it's the input that determines how the pedal is going to react. All three of these pedals, the hotter the input signal, the stronger the phasing effect is going to be that comes out of the output. And part of that is because these are OTA, or Operational Transconductance Amplifier based phasers, as opposed to Op Amp or Optical or JFET based. And well, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video, but I mean, how lucky are we that we have all these types of pedals built using all these different methods from all different eras, all available to us. I mean, granted that real 1970s version one pedal is gonna be a little more expensive, but that's not a crazy price for a legit piece of history right there. Now, one thing I read about and I was all ready to tackle in this video was the issue of sucky bypass and even clock noise when the pedal isn't engaged. So I gave it a quick test. <laughs> So obviously there is a difference in there. The nano version is true bypass. These two are not. And if you squint with your ears, yeah, there is a slight coloration in there. It would be fine for a live pedal board when you're playing with a band at a gig, but something you would probably want to physically bypass for recording. However, remember what we said before, input signal matters. If I have a really low output guitar and I put a fully dimed dirt pedal after one of these to bring it up to crunching volumes, yeah, you're gonna hear some stuff. Of course, that right there is a ridiculous example because unless your pedal is broken or you set up your gear like a crazy person, you're not gonna hear that. Also, remember that with a lot of older pedals, you'll find greater differences between them even when they look exactly the same. Just because sometimes they just use whatever parts they had available that day. And then over time, components wear out and their values drift out of spec. Any pedal over 30 years old probably needs a recapping and a recalibration to sound the way it did when it was first built. You can follow AmpTech74 on Instagram for some amazing posts where he restores vintage pedals to their former glory. As for these three, I think they're all great, but for different reasons. I like how clear and quiet the newer Nano one is. I like how warm and murky the Russian one can get. And the reissue kind of splits the difference with a very pronounced vocal-esque sweep on the higher frequencies. I had a different type of small stone collection a few years ago and uh, straight up worst pain in my life. I like these ones a lot more. Tell you what, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, go and follow the page's Instagram. I don't plug that enough. And then go get yourself a nice tall glass of water. You'll thank me later, trust me on that. I'll catch you on the next one.